Hi, welcome back to Latin Guitar Mastery. Today we're going to be looking at a guitar choral by Mario Ganji, who's an Italian guitarist composer who visited Brazil, was inspired to write a choral in the style of a Brazilian choral, which is a very iconic and popular style made famous by guitarists like Garoto and Baden Powell. And this piece is quite accessible. A lot of the chorals by Baden Powell and Garoto are really challenging, really high level. But this one I think offers uh, some challenge, but for intermediate players, but definitely playable, especially at a slow tempo, and you can build your, your speed up to, to get some momentum in this piece. What I really like about this piece is that it's a really catchy melody, and it kind of fits, the whole thing fits really well on the fingers because it's been written by a, a classical guitarist, a guitarist who understands the mechanics. And using the fingerings I'm gonna show you today and some of the musical considerations, um, I think you'll be able to find your way through this piece pretty pretty well. So let's get stuck in. As always, LGO members get access to uh, the printable score, which is interactive, so you can slow it down and, and loop sections. Starting with the first couple of bars. Okay, so there's a lot of quaver motion, and uh, we're, there's quite a lot of bar chords. And we start off with an F sharp chord to a B7 chord to an E minor chord, which is a 2-5-1, or major 2-5-1. And you want to set that first bar up straight away. So basically thinking about that first arpeggio, first chord um, already. So you can have that bar ready or you can get it ready when you play the E. And then the second chord is still in second position. So we've got two, two chords using the bar on two. Okay, so our second chord is a B7 sharp five. All right, and then we go to a nice simple arpeggio in E minor. So that's our resolution. Okay, then we end up with a G in the bass on the third beat of that next bar. And we're gonna keep that G down while we play with our uh, fourth and second finger. So a little bit of a stretch there and you have to hold that note down. And then we're gonna slide the whole thing down. So we're gonna slide the whole thing across. All right, so that's a bit of a, a tricky chord, but if you keep that, those two fingers down, you'll find you'll get that quite, quite quickly. Okay, once you've played that chord, which is, uh, you can either see it as an F sharp half that F sharp diminished or a B7 flat 9 with an F sharp bass. That's really more of a B7. Once you've done that chord, then we can go back to our B with the second finger and again. So basically, we do the same twice the first time. Second time second time with the G bass. And then we end up back at the B with the first finger, ready to start again. This time, instead of going, we're gonna do uh, E, F sharp, G, okay? And then we're gonna go to our first time bar, first time ending, which is an F sharp arpeggio, F sharp seven arpeggio with an F sharp bass. All right, back to our B7. Chromatic bass part and then repeat. Slide, G in the bass, set up again. Okay, second time ending, A minor in fifth position, pull off. And then uh, we go to second position, which is really a B7 with an A bass. So kind of keep that shape. And we finish with an E minor harmonic 12, harmonic 12. Okay, so that's the A section. The next section is in G, which is our relative major. So we're gonna go straight into relative major, which is kind of a nice lift to the, to the feel. So we're gonna start 
this section with a G major arpeggio in third position, okay, including the E, which makes it a G13. Hold that, that note down while you're playing the next bass note to provide a bit of continuity. And I like to play this D with the fourth finger. So I'm going to slide to our A sharp diminished. Open E string, slide the fourth finger to eighth fret, and we have eight and six, which is our G and A sharp, and then move to one fret down to fifth position. Okay, so we're going to go, still using the open string, you could do a pull off there as well. Okay, so we're going to go, and that kind of works. Now we end up back in third position for our G chord, sort of a syncopated pattern, E diminished, A minor 7. G sharp, major seven. So this is quite a straight, kind of uh, quite a, a solid straight rhythm there. Continue with the arpeggios. Again, the same thing. So now we land on the G and we play an arpeggio, which is uh, starting on 10, seven, eight, open, and then the D here, all right? And then we continue the pattern in the bass. So let's continue that. Now we're gonna go move up to uh, the arpeggio again. And instead, this time we're doing a turnaround with using octaves. And that's how I do the octaves. Uh, and now we're going to go back to the first section, which is the A section. So repeat the A section. And finally, we're up to our C section, which is in E major. Now, this is a little bit unusual, but sometimes composers will go to the relative major uh, the tonic major if we're playing in a minor key we're in E minor so we're now going to go to E major so sort of continuing this journey away from the tonic E minor G E minor and now we're going to do E major so we have this is a nice little sequence of E G sharp G diminished F sharp 7 all played in in our pigeon style. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, sixth position. So we go to E9. Continue the arpeggios in seventh position, and then arpeggios. It's kind of like chord tones here. We've got an A here. Now we're going to go to up a little bass run, which, which we're going to go one, four, two, slide the two, our C, C sharp seven flat nine, and then we jump back to the sixth fret, F minor seven, B seven. Let's repeat. Final section, E13, really lovely chords here, E13 to an E7 flat 9, 13, something like that, A9, A minor 9, and finish with an E arpeggio, F. back to the A section. That's it for me. Hope you enjoy this uh, really fun guitar shorter. Let me know what you think of this piece if you like Mario Ganji's music and if you'd like more shorters. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy my lessons. And I'll see you next time.